Hello, in this video I'm going to be going over a binomial example with chi-squared goodness of fit test and there's actually going to be two tests involved to demonstrate the distinction between cases where you're estimating p or you're given p as the the actual parameter to test as part of the test so you're not estimating and how that affects the degrees of freedom. So let's quickly write the hypothesis test a moment. It's about a study of number of girls in a family with five children. So, you know, it does suggest binomial suitable because five is fixed. We're looking at families with five children and a number of girls in those families. We might expect 0.5 uh, as a reasonable, you know, there's 50-50 chance uh, that uh, there'd be boy or girl. So it seems to be a reasonable thing to have a look at. So that's our hypothesis. I've put, it's always better to say more than less. Uh, we need to at least, uh, the bare minimum you could say is a suitable model for the data. You probably get away with that, but I always think refer to what the data is about. In hypothesis, you might get away with uh, just saying for the data, but um, to just say it fits would certainly not. So I've probably written more than I need to there, but that's definitely fine. Um, so we've set up the hypothesis. Uh, we now, these are the what's called the uh, OI. We need to find out the EI. And in order to do that, we need to find out the probabilities. So let's just write these numbers down, the, these numbers down, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And let's work out the probability under the assumption that that p is equal to 0 0.5 so so we're, we're going to work out the probabilities under the assumption that p is equal to 0 0.5 using a binomial model so for example this one would be 0 0.5 to the power of 5 whereas this one would be um, 5 or 5 c1 times 0 0.5 to the power of 4 times by 0 0.5 and so on and using uh, the binomial model um, for each of them and this uh, this one the next one here would be 5c2 0 0.5 to the power of 3 times by 0 0.5 to the 2 obviously yes okay so we're using the binomial uh, formula you can also if you for those of you who like to use the formula uh, the calculator some calculators are working out and on the calculator that many of my students are used to uh, you're used to is binomial pd the actual uh, you can work it out from that but i'm just going to write in the numbers for that now okay so there's our probabilities using the binomial you can just see the pasca uh, the kind of binomial coefficients on the top here because of the 0 0.5 it had been the same probability and success and failure so we've got that symmetry in this particular case so now we can work out ei which is basically going to be 100 times p is going to be 100 times by p because the number of trials we have the number of times this has been repeated we've looked at is the hundred five we, we're basically looking at 100 families where which have five children and only five children so we're times in each of these by 100 so the first one is 100 divided by 32 so that's equal to 3.125 and so on okay so i'm going to um write in my oi below though there they are and what we'll notice here is that actually two of the cells, we've got the symmetry anyway, have got expected values less than five. And in those cases, the test statistic x squared doesn't really uh, work. It's too inaccurate. So if we have the values less than five, we need to combine. So we can combine these two and combine these two. So I'll just write those up also in a separate table with those combined. So now we have a table with combined. So this is combined after combining. Combining, we have 
a table of OI and EI so we can work out our test statistic. So X squared, which is the observed takeaway EI squared divided by EI for each one. So let's work out each of those actual residuals individually. And adding those together, we get 16.71. Uh, so now it's time to actually look at the chi-squared tables. But before we do that, we need to decide on our degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom in this case, because we weren't estimating um, any of the, the we weren't estimating p we were testing for it being that was part of actually the h naught was that p is equal to 0 0.5 so we just need to take away one because there's all we're always taking away one because the, the last one um, after combining because if we basically if we knew what what the number is in in this category this category and this category we would then we could then say we knew the other one so we're always taking away one so there's three degrees of freedom so we're looking for and we're looking and the the significance level we were looking for was five percent so let's look for the chi squared tables for that so we wanted put we again remember it's always this side we're looking at these are the uh, ocra tables that we were for so those are the tables that ocra produce i'm sorry the other boards are similar um so we we've got 90 it's five percent so we're looking at 0.95 with three degree, uh, degrees of freedom so it's 7.815 is our critical value so our critical value for chi squared, for chi squared, never been particularly good at writing my Greek symbols. Gets even worse, but never mind. Uh, with three degrees of freedom at 0.95, was is equal to 0 0.7815, a uh, 7.815. So I always like to draw my chi squared distribution. Just about uh, starts at zero, this one, but there we go, starts at zero. And because it has one degree of freedom, you may remember it kind of starts up there. But anyway, this is our critical value is 7.815. But we're within we're actually here, which is 16.71. And remember, critical values are the critical region is where we reject H0. Okay, now, so we need to interpret that. We're rejecting H0. And so basically, we're making the assertion that, uh, that H0 is it's a suitable model so we have to say there's insufficient evidence that xb5055 is a suitable model for these data so let's just write that in so we have 7 point uh, 16.71 is greater than 7.815 reject h naught there is insufficient evidence that x binomial Five zero point five is a suitable model for 
the number of girls in five children families okay so a lot of it um, as far as you know just exam points as far as the a lot of the as far as the examiners are concerned they're going to play, play a lot of emphasis on the interpretation making sure you say reject h nor making sure you have your comparison there and making sure your hypothesis is set up that's often you know as more as many marks and sometimes more than the actual calculations themselves so it's, you know just checking you know and what you're doing Okay, so now let us take the second part of the question, which is basically getting us to do a hypothesis test on a binomial with no fixed parameter, but basically we're using the, the actual data itself to estimate P, and that's going to take away one of the degrees of freedoms. So, okay, so let's just set up the hypothesis again, just because it's slightly different now, because obviously we're not specifying the value of P in our hypothesis. So let's just do that. I could reasonably be accused of being verbose there in my word in using the word model twice there, and but I've covered it. The main thing is that we say a bimodal model, a bi mon bi binomial model is suitable to model the number of girls in five children families so we've got context there and the, and the fact that we're just talking about binomial not specifying p so it's important we get that right and now we need to estimate p so to estimate p i suppose what i might do is because remember there's 100 trials These are the numbers from 100 trials. So estimate the individual probabilities, first of all. So we've got dividing each of these by 100. We'd have 0 0.13, 0 0.18, and so on. And then what we can do is estimate the mean and then just divide that by 5 because the mean is equal to NP. So we're going to estimate P. So the mean, EX estimated we could even call it x bar if you like estimated is equal to um these zero times 13 plus one times 18 plus yeah it's divided by the 100 as well two times 38 i've kind of undone what i've just done but it doesn't really matter i'll divide by 100 Two times, plus 3 times 20, plus 4 times 10, plus 5 times 1. I kind of undid what I wanted to do there. Basically, I was going to do 0 times that, 1 times that, 2 times that, 3 times that. But at the end of the day, I started writing this, so I'll carry on now. And that's 100. So that's my x bar, which is equal. That comes to... one point nine nine. So we could just say the mean is equal to NP for a binomial. So we've got the we've got one point we've got the one point nine nine is equal to five times P. So that gives us an estimate of P is equal to zero point three nine eight estimate. Remember. We don't know. That's what we're going to use in our calculations now. But it's going to take away one degree of freedom. So now we're going to need to work out our probabilities and times them by 100, which will give us our estimated value. So let's just do that. So let's write out our numbers again. Zero, zero, one, two, three four and five obviously zero would be one minus 0 0.398 which would be 0 0.602 to the power of five and then this one would be 5c1 0.602 to the power of four times by 0 0.398 
and then for example this one again would be equal to 5c2 0 0.602 to the power of 3 times 0.398 squared but this is quite a long process so you might choose to use binomial cd and then actually you might find a list thing uh binomial pd sorry binomial pd on calculator rather than using the formula but i always like to mention the formula because people are so used to using the calculator nowadays they forget what the formula is so so binomial pd on calculator and you could use list which will give you all of the six numbers that you, all the six probabilities that you actually need and i'll just write those down so there they are say there's nothing to especially on a chi squared test there's nothing to stop you just putting that in your calculator the binomial mode on your calculator and working them out and so so that's our probability of them getting a particular value so that means that to ei we just times by 100 so times by 100 to get ei because we've done we've got 100 families so obviously that gives us 7.91 26.14 26.14 and 7.55 and 0.99 right i might i might write out now the oi on the same thing uh, so we've got 13 18 38 20 10 and 1 okay so now i've got this i should notice that um, i've got my expected value here is 7.99 so that means i'm going to have to combine that these two columns together so let's do that so now i'm ready to do my test statistic which is x squared with my combined cells so i can do my test statistic remember that's the sum of all the observed i take away the estimated values divided by the estimated values so let's just write those values in so there they are with the individuals calculated and then we can add all those together which gives us 7.217 so that's our test statistic now we need to work uh, think about the look at our chi-squared value uh, the degrees of freedom think about that um, is going to be equal to the, the number of cells after combining is one two three four five we're going to take away one because we do that because we, we the last one is kind of fixed after the other four are determined but we're also going to take one because of the estimated the estimated p so that's going to be equal to three so we need to look at the chi squared it feels a while ago now but it was at a um it chi squared three at 0.95 we need to look at that value in our tables and let's just quickly look that up okay so just finally realized that it's actually the same chi squared value by coincidence as it was before so it's 0.7815 we've reached here in a different way really because in the first case we did that because we combined two we combined two cells together so we had four four minus one because we combined two of them uh two two of them whereas in this case we only combined one of the columns together but we took one off because of the degrees of freedom so by chance we've ended up with the same critical value here because of the way the combinations have worked so it's 7.815 is our critical value finally do our comparison and conclusion so we can write in our we've got our critical value which is 7.815 there that's our critical region here but our value this time 
is slightly under our critical value. So it's right there as a inequality. 7.22 is less than 7.815. So in this case, we do not reject because we're not in a critical region. Remember, the critical region is a set of values for which we do reject H0. So this time we do not reject H0. And then we need to write context. Now, some people, you'll find depending on the specification, whatever course you're doing about how the wording of that, um, how kind of lax you can be and how relaxed you can be. I've heard people say a binomial is a suitable model for the data and that's fine. However, just some people are more pedantic and OCR are definitely uh, in that category, OCRA. Uh, definitely in that category. So we kind of have to phrase it as a kind of strange double negative and say there is insufficient evidence to suggest a binomial model, a binomial is not a suitable model uh, a suitable model for the number of girls girls in five children families okay so that I say some it'd be worth for those of you preparing for examinations it'd be worth looking at kind of solutions and mark schemes to check whether that's consistent with that so that's certainly the most pedantic thing and I know the board that we're preparing for OCRA I've seen in the recent mark scheme that it where it said they require that kind of uh, interpretation at the end okay so I hope you found this useful bye